Hey. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Anderton's TV. Yeah, welcome. Where, yes, so, and it's a beautiful day today. It is. And there's no finer thing to do on a beautiful day than pick some wonderful guitars up, yeah. have a jam, and then talk about them. <laughs> Sit inside. So <laughs> today, we're very excited to show you um, the Heritage guitar range. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, Heritage's history, uh, Heritage where it came from. And we're going to talk about these three beautiful guitars that we've got here. But what we're not going to do, I'm just going to get this out there straight away, yeah. is we're going to try to refrain from doing Gibson comparisons. Because today I think we just want Heritage to have its moment in the sun. Yeah. And then another time in the future, we'll do the whole right blindfold up, take a 335, take a 535. Take a Les Paul. So that's yeah. it. We're not taking the word Gibson anymore no. in this video. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Don't worry, um, that'll happen in the, in the comment section yes. right now. You're like, Whoa. So, <laughs> I'm just about to realise that I now can't continue the heritage story without saying the word Gibson, so hey, I'm going to say the word Gibson You have again. to. You can't so, say heritage without saying Gibson. in 1985, Gibson moved their electric guitar plant from 225 Parsons Street, I believe, in Kalamazoo, in Michigan, down to Music City, Nashville. Um, I, if I'm honest with you, I don't know why they did it, but why wouldn't you? It's a beautiful place, Nashville. But yep. they moved. Yep. And they offered um, the employees the chance to relocate with them. Yeah. Um, but some of them didn't want to. It's a, let's, let's be fair, it's a long it's way, a big upheaval. Three people or something, yeah. Um, so some people stayed and they started the Heritage Guitar Company um, from the same building. Um, and I'm sure I've read somewhere, you know, some machinery was left behind and they yeah. purchased that as well. Um, and yeah. so the Heritage Guitar brand was born in the mid 80s. And although it's made um, a, a variety of different guitar shapes uh, over the years, the, the current range and probably the core of everything they've really made over that time has um, been in one of these style guitars or perhaps in some slightly bigger jazz boxes, which we're going to yeah, do in a separate video. a couple video. of other jazz boxes that we're going to do later on in another video. Yes. So yeah. that's basically the, the sort of history of Heritage. Yeah. Um, it's a cool story. Uh, and you can see obviously where, uh, you know, the roots and its designs Absolutely. come from. So Pete, it's no, um, um, would you now please, one at a time, yes. grab a guitar, whichever one you yeah. like. Well, let's start, with, let's start with this one here. So this is the 150. Um, and of course, again, we're not gonna we're gonna frame from going over there, but you know you can see where this comes from. Uh, it's a mahogany, uh, one piece mahogany body, beautiful mahogany neck, Grover tuners, rosewood fingerboards. It's got Seymour Duncan 59s in the neck and the bridge. Uh, you got, you know, you got your tone, t two tones and two volumes, three-way selector switch. It's got a beautiful kind of flamey maple top on here. Got some different colours as well. Different colours. Will be, uh, yeah, we put them on screen. I think there's screen. four different colours. Black. There's a. There's this uh, lemon burst. Yep. There's a traditional. I'll put them on screen. They call we'll it put original them on sunburst, screen. and then they've got like a cherry sunburst. As yeah, well, yeah. So. We we'll put them on screen. Um, it's got the white binding. The neck kind of feels to me like a fatter neck so it's not super slim but more, it's not more of a super, 50s than a 60s thing it's then. more of a 50s than a 60s but it's not as baseball batty as the 58 so like feel in, in between a 50s and a 60s kind of car. yeah it's almost like they've gone this it feels a little bit for everybody you know what i mean they've <laughs> done it so it feels nice for everybody uh the headstock of course is very different um but the brake angle of the headstock is actually the same so the 17 degrees um you know, because some people think that that's the problem with the Les Pauls but I, or Gibsons, but I don't think it is. I think it's just the the way you look after your guitars, basically. But but the difference you can see here, because the headstock is slightly narrower than um, Gibsons, the the string angle is more straight onto the tu to the tuner pegs here, yeah. which might lead it to have a better tune stability. I don't know, but where the the on the Gibson is quite yep. a little bit wider. But so that that's it basically. Um, and there's beautiful the back. case. Beautiful case. It comes with um, a beautiful case. Nitrocellulose finish. Oh, I can just smell that, man. It's, um, I love. Now these are these are what's called their standard series. Yeah. So from Heritage, the standard series is just gloss top. The, yeah. Up until fairly recently, they did used to offer some aging within the standard series, but that's now moved 
purely into the, the Heritage Custom Shop, which we'll talk about in another video. So yeah. just gloss finishes, beautiful case. Did I just say that? Yeah, you I said beautiful said that, case. Yeah. But let me show you this beautiful case. Um, beautiful <laughs> case like this. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I'm and loving the fact that it's got Seymour Duncan 59s on it. So let's hear those. Yeah, the Seymour, they, they are just classic sounding pickups. Um, but here is the neck. Go. There's that kind of. It's just a nice tone. It's straight into the DP40. They do want to go a bit, don't they? I mean, the, clean. The 59 for me from Seymour Duncan was always wired a little hotter. You know, at the hotter <laughs> end of those kind of yeah. pickups that you get on the on the uh, Les Paul. But. Yeah. So nice and quiet as well. Here's the middle position. <laughs> So it has to go back on the neck oh, pickup. Yeah, I, felt, I felt it. It's it really nice, man. It's really, really nice. It really is nice. It's really nice. The the fingerboard, uh, the, the finger, the edge of the fingerboard is not rolled, which I like. It's it's got it's got a slightly little bit of a tick, but it's not like you know one of those. So here is the <laughs> which I really prefer that old fashioned kind of feel. He likes that. Uh, I like it a bit square, you know. <laughs> No, 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 I cut that out. Okay, so here is the bridge. Let's try Nothing some, wrong with some that. gain, a little bit of gain from the Dane on the bridge. Want to tone back a little bit? Bit of Gary. Off every time I think about it, every time I do, do this, you? I think about John like going, I don't like it when people I don't bend like that, that note. note. So I'm I like, liked it. and then here's the middle position. Man, here's the uh, Nick. Just that was a little bit of you, Centura I was into say, the Dane. Everyone's asking, Pete's using a, a Thorpey Dane for the main drive, and then that little last bit there to kick in was a Seriatone Centura on into top the, of the Dane. Into the Dane. Could I? Into the Dane. Have you got anything on the board that is a little into bit more Dane. like, you know, a modern gainy tone for anybody? Not I say really. Modern, <laughs> you know, people that wanted to play like a Guns N' Roses kind of sound. I am really, or, I could just gain up the Dane halfway up to what, three o'clock, and then the Centura into it. So. <laughs>
fine, isn't it? Well, okay, so let's move on. Yeah. Uh, I and mean, it smells delicious. Is uh, uh, again. <laughs> It's a very, very nice guitar. Oh, I'm playing that um, one. Well, that's the next one, yeah. isn't it? So... Look at this. Look at this. It just looks great, doesn't it? Where did they come up with that design I from? I don't know. I've got no idea. So this uh, is called the 535. Again, you've got some classic colours. Um, oh, yeah. That's they one thing I noticed. Because I, I remember when I first took them out of the box and put them on here, and I went... Mm. Oh, hang on, wait. So that actually you just that, smashed you the hole through the top. Yeah. So they've got the, the ears on the 535 are a little bit more like the 50s kind of ears rather than, you know, they're a little bit rounder than the sort of the pointier yep. ears that are on the sort of the 60s style 335. I mean, I, I know it's... I can't stop smelling these. It man. is what it is. It's, you know, it's like a laminate maple body with a centre block, a mahogany neck, a rosewood board. It's like, it's all the ingredients that you yep. need to go into your favourite pie just yep. with a different name on the headstock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's have a little listen yeah. to oh, man. what I mean, we get. Um, let's see. I was, I was just saying, if, if Larry Carlton had a brother <laughs> called Barry Carlton, he'd be Mr. 535, wouldn't he? You'd have Larry Carlton, Larry, Mr. Barry. 335, and Barry Carlton, Mr. 535. Oh, man. It feels, again, it's got this very similar neck to that. That sounds less drivey than this, and yet there's still 59 pickups on yeah, there. Yeah, I think it? this sounds like, as well, it seems slightly brighter to me. You know, let's Definitely drive. got a different tone to it. Absolutely. Middle position. Again, mix and match. Pick a mix. Uh, yeah, and here's the bridge. Oh, yeah. It's funny oh. I noticed on the on these both of these this this is not screwed flat to the body, right? Which is uh, I would probably screw it flat to the body. Isn't but that's very much a player preference thing, though? Yeah, isn't it? it's the break um, angle of the. I mean, the, the, the neck, one of the it? things that uh, I'm trying to think if this was a Bernie Marsden thing or a Joe Bonamassa thing, but um, turn it do it over where where the strings go, yeah, in and then round that way over the top of the tailpiece and over the you know it's like over the hill and far far away. Yeah, lots okay. of different ways you can set your guitars up <laughs> on personal preference. Here is the Dane on nine o'clock. It's the middle position. some Centura oh. into that. Oh. I just turned the, oh. the tone down a bit. Don't bend that note.
I, I tell you what, it's more modern sounding in a way than a 335 really? is because of the pickups. Serious stank face going oh, there, on there. Oh, no, stank face. The stank face in it. and out of the body. But it's kind of it's got a bit, the 59s mm. is a bit more of a, I think if you put some pit puff, like really old really school, low wind, low wound yeah, yeah, pickups yeah. in it, it'll get a different tone. But man, it plays it's so beautiful. beautifully. Uh, it did plays we tell lovely. you about colors on this? I forget. Yeah, but no, we didn't. I don't think we did. No, so we you, you've just got, um, the same four choices again. So if you uh, it's a black one, if as you well, just want, yeah, if you don't want to see the grain, you want to go super, you know, plain. You can get a black one. Uh, but then you've got the the natural, the cherry red, and the original sunburst, Oof. which are on screen now. All look beautiful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the five thirty. I mean, this is the uh, five thirty beer o'clock. Five thirty. Yeah, the five thirty <laughs> the beer o'clock guitar. Uh, as you can hear here. Very, very hot. It's it's basically hollow. This guitar. It's got the dog ear P90s from Lola in it. That's great. Um, you don't see Lola pickups on enough kind of you know factory style guitars, do you? No. And I thought um, I thought I saw Mick Taylor put them in. Try some. I'm sure he's Lola put pickups. some in a PRS DGT. No, I think recently he's done a video where he bought a blonde casino. Did he? And he I think he put some Lola pickups in the casino because he didn't really like they bought one for a challenge. Right. You know where they both did like a buy for 500 quid challenge or whatever. And he put some Lolas in and it sounded really great. Uh, again Rosewood board hogging neck there. I, I love the tones. fact though that everything about this guitar the, the ringiness oh. The hollow guitar and the, the tailpiece just gives it a, such a different tone. Yeah. So even before you've got to the P90s, which are obviously going to sound very different too, you the whole that. guitar sounds completely different. I can feel that in the neck. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I can think of famous Epiphone Casino players probably more than I can think of famous uh, Gibson 330 players. But, but hey. that's the whole thing. So the, the 330 back in the, when it first came out, it, the, it was actually, the neck was attached further up here. Right. I, didn't um, know I think the 14th fret or 15th fret. I can't remember exactly which fret it was. Um, and then, then it became, or it was quite short. So then they changed it down to the, is that the 17th fret here, isn't mm -hmm. it? Uh, later on in 67, or even further up 20, that. 15, 17, 19. Yeah, yeah 19. Fret, it? But I think it, it was kind of dangling around up here instead. I can't remember exactly the numbers. I should do, but... Um, so it's all the same basic idea again, laminate maple body, all the uh, same. mahogany neck, 20, yeah. uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, which I don't think we mentioned before, but that's the same as on these two yeah. as well. Same, uh, same, same, tune, same. Same, same, same. Oh, good so it's time. much more P90, isn't it? Mm. Uh, the the 330's always been one of my all time, on my list top five guitars to own, ever. Um, just because the P90's and the, the the full hollow guitar, that kind of tone. You can't put lots of gain on it because it's just mm. going to howl, but um, you can dial that tone. I, I always liked that, um, I mean, I, again, I, when that James Bay album came out, Chaos and the Calm, yeah. he was playing um, like a completely hollow, in the Epiphone, Epiphone right? uh, 1966. Yeah, what was casino. that guitar? No, it wasn't. Was it? it was the. It was a, something like a Century or something like that's that. It, that's Same it. Same kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah. But so many of the tones that he got on that album, I just felt wouldn't have worked with any other guitar. And it was one of those just. I know it's a fairly modern album and a. Yeah. And, you know, but it was like lots of reverb, very ambient, atmospheric. Yeah. Openings to tracks that just. Yeah, like you say, if you'd have done that with a Telecaster or with a Les Paul or something, it would have, it would have taken on a different life of its yeah. own. Where, but it just works. It's got this hollow, so well hollow. With the
a chance oh, to key like in a good choices. old uh, I like chance it. to key like uh, some old fashioned anyway whatever so here's the two pick up together it's got it's just that It's gonna boost it up slightly so bit, good. but the other way around. So I get a bit of lows in there. Back on that. Can you do See, it, That's John a good Mayer? example of how, like, that doesn't. It's not the same. It's a very different. It's a super, it's super not the John. Stuff. It's not the John Mayer. Like, you couldn't do that. It's got... Because they are single chords, you know. Yeah, it, maybe. It's but got a... That was the one he played the... On the casino. On the casino, yeah. yeah. Mm. So... But it's got... It's got a... I like it with a little bit of gain. Just yeah, a I mean, little, this is, this tiny is, this, little bit of hair. This is just the boost on yeah. the Dane, so you give it a little bit more kind of. Here's the bridge. So that's without this. Is oh. Slightly bit. Here's a little bit of Dane. Low gain, because if yeah. I put more gain in, it got to 10. It doesn't fade back. first tone you had with just the Dane on there, there was a little strum and I'm, I'm even hearing like the John Lennon-y kind of Beatles-y. Yeah, but oh, it's, 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 it's great. Look, yeah, we are photographing every single heritage guitar that comes through Anderton. So when we list them on our website, you get to see the individual ones. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's some serious, serious guitar porn there if you want to go have a look. Um, yeah. It's obviously a much, much, much smaller business than Gibson, and so consequently will make far, far fewer guitars. So yeah. You know, I, hard to know whether or not you're certainly not going to see these everywhere in the same way that you would with Gibsons. Great. But the pricing is similar. You know, I mean, there's, there's each of these guitars is not dissimilarly priced to its um, namesake by the other brand. Um, okay. But I, look, you prices know, honest, will be below. Honestly and truthfully, I kind of feel like it's one of those decisions that you guys need to, you know, need to just make personally. Um, one of the cool things we've started doing in Andertons, if you want to hook up, is uh, live video demos now. So if you contact the store, we have a, a part of the store called the Guitar Gallery where some of the more sort of exotic <laughs> guitars go. Um, and the guys in there are happy to arrange a time with you. So if you see something on our website and you go, oh, it's that particular, I can't decide it's either that one or it's that one, that they'll get the two guitars for you and you can have a little live video demo. Uh, of course, when the store gets back open again, you know, jump in come the car in. And, and, and come and have a, a noodle on these. But I, I, I've got to say, you know, it's for me, I, I, I appreciate that, you know, Yamaha and Ibanez and other brands kind of do this style of guitar. For me personally, I kind of, there's some, there's the lure of, of the Gibson thing. And I think the sort of the connection to the heritage connection to the original factory, it, it sucks me in in a way that I yeah. go, oh yeah, I'd like to check those out too. Yeah. More so than maybe some other brands that do guitars that are similar to this. But and that factory is, you know, that was when they made all the, all the Gibson started making the mandolins and ba all that stuff back in 1917, back in you know. So it is, that place has got super, a lot of, 
heritage. Yeah, I like the know. fact that the brand isn't <laughs> the heritage. heritage. The heritage. Yeah, I because quite like it, that. it comes from where Gibson originated. That's yeah. where it comes from. You well, know? look, so check them out. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I really, <sighs> guitars is such a personal thing. You know, there is no right or wrong. There is only what you like. Exactly. And what the individual likes. Exactly. Um, so there we but are. There we are. Yes. Check them out. We've like. had fun. Uh, I expect you'll see uh, a few more <laughs> Heritage guitar videos over the next few weeks and months because we want to dive into the couple of jazzes that they do. So they do a 575 and they do an Eagle. Um, when the Eagle lands. Yeah, which is we... based on one of the sort of the bigger jazz boxes. Yeah. Uh, and there's a Heritage Custom Shop, which we'll dive into yes. at some point or I'll have yes. a look. But hey. So not to miss that, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Yeah. What he said. What, anyway. What he said. We're going to jam out and yeah. uh, I will see you in another video soon. Au revoir. Mm -hmm.